Hey, what's up, guys? Just chilling in bed here. I've been thinking today about uh, just all the shit that went down. Man, it's got to say, it's crazy, man. Crazy. It's been crazy. I'm pretty sure there's a demon in my room. I'm not joking. I'm pretty sure. I, I watched a video about a haunted place, and I'm like 99% positive that I got demons. Right? Like, I got a demon. I got a devil. I can feel the presence of a, of a demonic entity. I don't know if it's going to, like, kill me. But I'm not too happy about it. Frankly, I'm a bit disappointed. And frankly, I'm very upset that there's some kind of demon entity on the jungle here. I'm worried it's going to be, like, a ghost Gorduck. I'm worried it's, like, an actual Gorduck. Like, I'm, like, mean joked about the Gorduck because it's too so long. But, like, my thoughts, like, actually conjured one into reality. I'm a bit worried about that. Because, you know, I'm not sure I can handle it. Like, the, like, I think Gorducks are, like, I've imagined them as so tough. I don't think I can actually, I can actually beat one. I think they would actually kick my I think Gorduck would actually kick my ass. You know, like, I would be dead. Like, in a one-on-one -on -one fight, Gorduck would win, hands down. Um, I don't know about you, but, you know, when I'm playing in bed here, I'm just a bit scared. I've been thinking... About a Gordick story my dad told me. Here's a story. Okay, story time. This story takes place in the year 1987. And not like the memes, Stranger Things, you know, haha, kooky clothes, music, 1987, like the actual, like real 1987, like the real, like it's like gray, there's a lot of wood everywhere. Wood pale, <laughs> And there is frizzy hair, but that's just because, you know, everyone just uses cheap hairspray. And, you know, and shit's not good. Ronald Reagan is president, which some people will say is base, but honestly, let's not fucking kid ourselves. Ronald Reagan, not a good president. Bad times. So Ronald Reagan's president. And there's a depressed family in Oklahoma. Now, obviously, Oklahoma... You know, they're not in the panhandle, they're in the pot. You know, they're in the, the fucking, like, you know, the square part of the state. It's in the middle of nowhere. Little town in Oklahoma. Probably never heard of it before. A little town called Lincoln. Lincoln, Oklahoma. They're living out there. And they're in Lincoln. There's a river. A river in Lincoln. A little stream, creek. Runs alongside it, runs up into the woods. Just a small town, about 20, 30 people in 1987. You know, not 30 people, but you know, like less than a thousand people, you know, like a small town, like maybe even like a like hundred people, like max. Right? And people move out, you know, they don't stick around. It's a real small, tight knit community. And so when something happens, people know, you know. And when something goes down, people generally speak up about it. But they're also pretty afraid, you know, to cause trouble. They don't want no trouble in Lincoln. So Lincoln's got a creek. Got a little stream. Ooh. Excuse me. There's a little stream going up into the woods. And there's this boy in Lincoln. His name? That boy's name? Sean Mallory. Sean Mallory lives in Lincoln in Oklahoma. He goes up the creek. He's going up the creek to go play. Because he's a little boy in Oklahoma in the 1980s. He don't got no Nintendo. He don't got no TV. He barely even got a radio in it. His dad's got it tuned on to what he wants to listen to. He don't get to play with the radio. Sean Mallory, if he wants to have fun, he goes out in the woods and he plays with sticks and rocks. Now, Sean Mallory, he's friends with the local boys in town, too. He's friends with all the guys. You know, he's got himself, you know, he's about 12. He's got himself a little girlfriend. You know, he's he's a little, just a guy, you know. It's a boy out living in the countryside in America, in Oklahoma. Unfortunately, Sean Mallory's had an out with the guys. He had a big fight with Billy Shankins. Billy Shankins called him a faggot. Sean Mallory he didn't like that. He'd never been hurt, called that before. He said, fuck you. Fuck you, Billy Shankins. He punched, punched him right in the face. Gave him a fucking slap right in the kiss. 
Billy Shankins and Sean Mallory fought for about 20 minutes. And they both kind of came out. No one really won the fight. They just got in a lot of... They started slapping. And everyone fucking hurt. They're all pissed at each other. So Sean Mallory... He's bad. He's sad. And the boys... The other boys seem to like Billy Jen Shankins more than Sean Mallory. So they're picking Billy over Sean. And that upsets Sean even more. So Sean's on his own. An outcast in his own town. With his own friends. His sister, Ruth, also kick, doesn't want to talk to him. She thinks he's a piece of shit. He's an old, it's his older sister, Ruth. And she's got a pretty friend who Sean's got a crush on. Her name is Beth. But Beth don't give no time to Sean. Beth don't give Sean no time. She don't give no thoughts to Sean. He's a little boy. She doesn't think nothing about it. And I would say come, you know, three or four years time when Sean starts to grow and become a man. Beth may be looking a little sideways then. But Sean, that fate wasn't in Sean's cards. Sean made a bad mistake that day. He went up into the woods alone, sad, depressed. And he went up the creek. He said today is the day I'm going to find the source of the creek. He'd never done it before. Now, local legend says that the source of the creek is an area where young boys best not tread. It's an area where you best not be going if you're a smart one. Sean Mallory thinks he knows better. Sean Mallory thinks he knows best. He's a tough kid. He's having a bad day. It's time for him to make his life. Time for him to become a man. Go up the creek. Sean Mallory doesn't know what's up the creek. Sean Mallory walks for hours. Hours. Specifically two. Two hours. Goes all the way up to the top of the creek. He's deep in the woods. If he scream now, no one would hear him. He's all alone. He's left the town borders. The borders of the town, he's out. And he's deep in the woods. Deep in the Lincoln Woods. And he gets to the source of the creek. It's a bubbling spring. Fresh, clear water. Green moss all around. A smooth stone bottom. On a, on a spring-fed lake. At the top of the creek. As clear as crystal. The kind of water when you see it, your mouth starts to go. It starts to drool a little. Because you see how fresh and tasty it would be. You just take a little sip. So Sean's seen this. He knows what he wants. He goes in. Dunks his head right in the clear creek. Pulls it back out. And he takes a big handful. And he scoops it and drinks it up. He's loving it. This is some of the best. This is the freshest water, the cleanest, tastiest water Sean's ever had. And Sean's so, so enjoying this creek, this spring lake. He's discovered a whole new thing all to himself. The boys back in Lincoln won't even believe him. They'll think he'd be making, he's telling tales from school, they'll say. He's pulling their leg, yanking the chain, yet rolling the moss down the hill. Sean's making something up. But Sean's living it. He's living the dream. After two hours in the hot summer sun, Sean has found paradise. And it's that Lincoln Creek spring. And Sean's so excited and so wrapped up in his new discovery. He doesn't hear it. Walking from behind him. Loud thumps. That's 290 pounds of meat and muscle and bone and feathers stomps down with the bare vicious claws sharpening out from its meaty, strong paws and the beak <laughs> clapping against its jaws. 
Sean don't hear it. Sean doesn't hear his death until right when it's behind him and Sean looks around. He sees it there in all its glory, bright yellow like the sun, a beautiful, large, gourd duck. Sean can't believe his eyes. Before he can utter a word, Sean is ripped in half. Torn asunder. His legs flop down into the creek and start to go down river. And Sean's poor little body, his head, gets swallowed whole by this Gordok monster. About a week later, the town has been searching for Sean every day when they drag his legs up from the creek bed. And everyone in the village, they know. Everyone in the town, I should say, not a village. Everyone in the town of Lincoln knows what happened. All the adults know. The kids are begging their mom and dad to tell them what happened to Sean. But all they said is, Sean went up too far up the creek. Make sure you don't ever do what he did, little man. And Sean's sister, Ruth, and all the boys at school, they cried for days under the lost friend. But secretly, Sean's biggest enemy, Billy, was laughing because he knew that faggot got what he deserved. That's what he said. Good night, everyone.